Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. I'm going to show you how to take this old dilapidated park bench from this to this. Where'd my dog go? Let's get started. So before we start taking all the bolts, nuts, and screws off of this, I'm going to douse them with a little bit of WD-40 and let it soak for a little bit. That'll help get some of this lubricant down into the bolts and loosen them up. So I'm going to use some scrap uh, pressure treated lumber that I used for that trailer and it's a decking board that's made for outdoor use. I'm going to trace that off from the pieces that I pulled off of the bench and use them as patterns, trace them onto this and then cut them out. I think I'm going to go ahead and use a, a sharpie so that I have a good sharp edge to go off of and make sure that I hold this down and with help from Sabella the shop cat, we should get it done just fine. Well, it looks like there should be no question being able to see that to make my cut. Now, some of these pieces, I was wondering if there's any way I can get any of those out of here, and it looks like I may be able to. Okay, there's my four pieces and then the backing. So the only thing left now would be, and this was all I could save of it, would be the, uh, the side plates. And I may have to go out and double check myself and take a measurement before I, I trace that one off. And because it's a beautiful day, I'm going to move these outside and cut them out with the jigsaw. basic materials are cut out now and I did not cut the shapes here out because I think I can just bring them inside and I'll cut them on the bandsaw quicker but if you're doing everything by jigsaw it's not a problem to do that so I'm going to go ahead and cut these out on the bandsaw The next part you want to look at is I cut an extra piece of lumber and trimmed it off on a 45. This is, is basically a one and a half by one and a half trimmed at a 45 on this angle because that's going to go on the front of the bench. So I'm going to want to glue this and one of the slats up together. So I'm going to put a generous amount of glue on here and I'm going to do it on this piece as well. I'm going to smear some of this out a little bit to make sure I get a good 
contact with it. Now I'm going to grab some clamps and start lining this up. That's going to let me now come back and set some a couple holes in this and go ahead and tighten this up. I don't want that screw to draw a hole in here. few more on just because I don't think you can ever have enough clamps. Okay, so my bad, I'm now looking at this realizing these slats are an inch and a half and they need to be at least two inches so I'm going to take some of the scrap pieces that I have left and just trim some of those down so that I can laminate those back on and make those into at least a two inch wide board. I know it's a lot of extra work but you know I think it's the best thing I can do. Okay so I've cut all my my pieces so now I'm going to laminate them on. Now what I am going to do is glue them down and then tack them down. Now if you don't have a, a air nailer you could nail these down or you could use grabber screws again. I'm gonna try to hide them a little bit more. But. like this did I ever mention you can never have too many clamps now I'm going to come back go in the other direction on the top this set up and maybe I'll start working on cleaning up and painting the iron part. I'm bringing the metal out here to paint. I've kind of cleaned it up and have it ready to lay a coat of paint on it and I'm going to use some of this Rolls-Oleum two times in a uh, kind of a bronze tone. So we'll see how that looks. Now I was a little disappointed that the back piece of that I thought was also cast iron. It's actually just plastic but it's going to look fine once we finish with it anyway.
I've let the paint set up overnight on these and now I want to do a little bit of antiquing on it but I'm gonna do it kind of the outdoor way and I'm gonna use some rust-oleum copper color and also maybe some of this rust-oleum chalk paint which is a smoke glaze one of the main things to remember anytime you're painting with spray paints use the same brand otherwise one may dry at a faster rate and it can cause it to shrink up or or an alligator effect that you may not like the finished product on now also I recommend wearing some latex gloves and then we'll be using a rag on this as well I'm doing it outside it's a beautiful day so let's see how this goes Okay, I'm going to start with the copper, but I'm going to spray quite a bit away from it in light dusting and then try to wipe it off. So I'm going to take the router and just knock off the edges of the tops of each of these and I'm just going to take a clamp and just kind of secure these down and then I'll switch them around as I, oops, as I work these. And you know anytime you're going to be doing anything with the equipment you're going to want to make sure you're wearing decent eye protection and ear protection. And if it's too dusty, consider also wearing a face mask. We're going to be using the belt sander. And these are very cheap, but you could also use a regular belt sander or any kind of, of sanding. I've finished sanding all of the material. Now I just need to trim it down to an even four foot. So I'm going to take all the material and mark it off and then cut it on the chop saw. So let's get started. we've cut all of our lumber to the length we want I'm going to take a rasp and just knock off about a quarter inch on about a little less than a 45 degree angle this is going to taper the top off so it'll fit more into that cast iron uh, legs because that has a bit of a roll inside so that these fit in good and tight I can take a decent wood rasp this is fairly coarse and I can just kind of this down.
Now that this has had a chance to dry overnight, I'm going to take some Thompson's water seal, I've had this for quite a while, and just put a coat of this on top of all the wood to help it maintain that stain and hold up in the weather. It doesn't take a lot, just a simple, basic coat that I'll just let soak into these. Okay, we're ready to start putting this all together. So I decided rather than using some of the old um, rusty screws, bolts, nuts, and stuff, I went down, I picked up some stainless steel screws uh, and even the, the screws for the wood to go in. All in stainless steel because it's going to be sitting outside and I don't want it to rust. So let's get started putting this thing together. I'm going to finish putting some of the uh, the simple screws down here in the bottom, the bracing for the legs. I want to thank my mom for helping me with this video. Hi! <laughs> she came to town and I immediately put her to work. She's a big help with this. So many thanks, Mama. If you like this video, check out some of the other ones. And in the meantime, I'll see you soon. Are you okay? Huh? Are you happy? Everything good? Good, huh? huh? Yes. You was a big helper today, too. Did you help too. with this, too? Did you help? Uh, Did you help? Did you help? She's a big dog. Mm -hmm.